I'm Scott Hera, Director of Digital Content at the UMHS North American Administrative Office, and today we're speaking with uh, Class of 2022 graduate uh, Dr. Alexa Datko. And Dr. Datko, uh, good morning and welcome. Good morning to you too as well. Great. Dr. Datko, can you tell us a little bit about uh, where you're doing residency and also where you're originally from? Yeah, sure. So I am originally from San Diego, California. Um, grew up, born and raised in San Diego. I uh, was able to do my undergraduate at College of Charleston. Um, I was a Division One athlete, so that took me over to the South. Um, and then eventually made my way to UMHS. Um, I'm gonna be doing my residency in family medicine at University of Wyoming Casper uh, with a concentration in OB and women's health. Awesome, awesome. And did you, um, did you always want to be a doctor? I mean, what was your undergraduate background in? So I, uh, yes, going into college, that was what I was planning on pursuing. Um, my undergraduate was a bachelor's of science in biology with a minor in math. Um, and so our school didn't have a specific pre-med track, but I got all my prereqs with the intention of going to medical school. Uh, and so for me, I had applied, didn't get in that first cycle. So I went into the workforce. I started working at one of our local healthcare systems in San Diego, specifically working in physical therapy, um, both inpatient and outpatient. And it just kind of got me more interested in medicine. And for me, I was an athlete growing up all my life. And so I was always around um, athletes and injuries and that kind of stuff um, with orthopedic surgery, at PT, athletic training. So the medical field was something that I really wanted to go into. Um, and so that's kind of how it started. And that's kept going from there. Wow. And um, sounds like you may want to be a sports medicine doctor someday. Yeah. Ultimately. So that was my intention <laughs> going into medical school. I was like sports medicine, ortho, something around that lines. Um, and then it was kind of like once I started my clinical rotations, uh, my first OB rotation, I really fell in love with just women's health and the practice yeah. um, working with women. Um, and so that's kind of family medicine kind of gets lets me do everything. So I'm looking forward to it. Great. And what made you decide on attending UMHS over other medical schools? Sure. Um, so I most people think of, you know, medical school, you go straight out of college. And it was mm, probably a good 10 years after uh, six to 10 years after I finished college that I uh, went to UMHS. And one of my aunts, actually, she had, was a nurse practitioner, had done her undergraduate and went into nursing um and she decided that she wanted to go into medicine and become a doctor uh so she actually went to one of the first caribbean schools um and she did about six credits in one of the islands and then came back and did all of her stuff in pennsylvania but for me she was working with uh some of her fellow residents and she was talking to a lot of people that had gone to st george um and some of the other schools down in the Caribbean and I was just hadn't really thought about it as an option. So when I looked into it, uh, looked into the website page, looked into, you know, talked to the other people that had gone to Caribbean schools. And so on the website, like the small class sizes and the interaction with the professors was one of the kind of the main things that made me decide to UMHS. Excellent. And were there any professors or staff members in UMHS um, at either in state kits or Maine or clinical rotations that you found particularly helpful or inspiring? Yeah, so um, my first class that I was in my uh, as a med one student was my anatomy class and I always loved the body and I fell in love with anatomy and Dr. Um, McCracken and Dr. Afalabi definitely helped me out with that. And you, you, succeed, you get to see what medicine is and you get to say, oh, well, these are, you know, I've always had this up, you know, cough or and that's your lungs and you got to see the visual and actually see the body in our in our lab for anatomy. Um, and then from there, it just kind of it just went along. Um, Dr. Roy for pathology, he had a very good way of breaking things down um, and just explaining it to a lower level so that you could put the detail in that you needed to find from there. Okay, great. And um, is there anything specific about your medical education um, at UMHS that you help, think help you match into family medicine? I mean, I think the one of the big things about UMHS is that you get to put yourself into whatever situation you want to do. Um, so it, did, it was a big part of um, AMWA when we started on the island. Um, and I think really what I really enjoyed was the preclinical rotations that we did at JNF Hospital on the island. It got you to kind of put your foot in the door and see what it really was in the clinical setting. 
Um, and I had the experience in the clinical setting in San Diego, but being in an island hospital where it's just not what you expect what hospitals to be. And and it really gave you that, that, that kind of look at like what else that the world goes through as well. Like we are very privileged to be in the United States and have top healthcare systems, but it's not like that for everyone else. And I think that kind of really brought that perspective of like, there's so much stuff that you can do within medicine um, and specifically going into family medicine, you have to know every aspect of it. You're going to be in situations where your patients aren't, don't exactly know what they're looking for that's wrong with them. And you have to kind of guide them through that. And I think being able to do that on the island go before going into our clinical years um, really helped as well. Absolutely. And can you um, talk a little bit about your upcoming family residency at, what is it, University of Wyoming Casper? Sure. Yeah. Um, so when I was looking at my re uh, applying for residency, uh, I was looking at obviously something that I could do kind of everything. So family medicine definitely stood out to me, being able to do sports medicine, being able to do OB if I wanted to, um, and just kind of get that well-rounded kind of sense of medicine. Um, so when I was looking at uh, University of Wyoming, they have a specific OB tract. So you could do fulfill, you could do C-sections, you could do... Um, procedures and essentially fulfill what you would need to do to go out straight out of family medicine and go into OB. Um, or if you really wanted to, you could still apply for a fellowship. But I think it was the hands-on experience that you get. Uh, it is a smaller town uh, and they do also have a rural track and training program. So it just kind of gives me the, the, the idea that I could get into anything. Um, and I think that's one of some things that we don't necessarily see, you know, you go to the big cities and there's especially doctors for everything, but a lot of the United States doesn't live like that. There are plenty of places that are, you know, low income, low serve, under service. And it gives me that, why University of Wyoming Casper gives me that opportunity to learn everything that I would need to be um, a great doctor and excel in a, a smaller town like that. And it sounds like you're going to get some some great experience in uh, rural medicine. That's yeah. that's I think is really important um, to have people to go to those uh, smaller towns and smaller mm -hmm. regions where the healthcare is so desperately needed. Uh, yes. Why did you want to do a residency specifically um, in uh, family medicine? And can you just explain a little bit about what family medicine is for those who may not be familiar with it. I think sometimes people get confused as to what it is versus internal medicine. Yeah. So um, family medicine is when most people think about like, I'm going to my primary care doctor or, you know, um, your general practice doctor is kind of what family medicine entails. So with it comes along <laughs> your health and wellness checks, your annual physicals, um, your intro OB checks, um, Preventative health a lot um, is a big topic in, in family medicine, along with um, any of your intro like rehab stuff. So all the stuff that you would need on just a regular basis, general depression for psych, going in and getting your me Medicare wellness checks is something that family medicine entails. Um, and I think for me specifically is the, ver just the variety of that and I can tailor what I want to do in that practice. So I can cover everything. I can work with pediatrics to geriatrics um, and be specific if I want to. And so family medicine gives you that opportunity to kind of see everybody. But the one thing that it really stood out to me is the education. Um, when we go through medical school, we go, we go in this knowing that this is what we want to do. And so you're, you're going to learn all this information. But a lot of the population doesn't necessarily know what they need to do to prevent diabetes, heart failure. Um, and so that preventative aspect and the education that you can promote to the community was a really big aspect for me of looking at family medicine. Okay, great. And it sounds like you, you probably have a lot of interest, but what inter interests you the most? Can you think of one or two things that uh, interest you the most about family medicine? Um, I think the big thing when I, when I did my core family medicine rotation was just being able to see that I can do anything with it. Um, so obviously I was grew up an athlete. I've always been interested in sports medicine and then going through my clinical rotations, uh, OB and women's health, just the fact that it's not promoted enough. Um, and over half the population are women and something that they're going to have to go through on a daily basis. Uh, so being able to tailor my practice in the future to those needs specifically that I find very fascinating. And then obviously helping the community learn more about what they can do for their health. 
Okay. And what do you, do you have any goals for your upcoming residency? Um, so with it being in a, a small town community, uh, my goal is kind of just immerse myself in the culture and see everything that I can see. Um, we have the opportunity at University of Wyoming Casper to go on to some of the Indian reservations um, and do health and medicine with them, um, as well as we get to go uh, off site into um, Utah and Colorado and, and Washington to do some of our PEDS rotations. So just kind of kind of soak in the experience and get as much as I can do within my three years. And so that way I can help become a better doctor in the future. Wow. So it sounds like you're going to, you're going to get some really wonderful experience. Yes. Definitely. Um, let's uh, switch gears a little bit and talk a bit about the COVID-19 mm -hmm. pandemic. And this is something I know, um, I think a lot of people feel this is a crucial time to be a doctor and the public may have a better understanding of the importance of doctors after what the world has experienced the past two years. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it's, it's obviously been a rough couple of years, just kind right. of dealing with it and figuring out what's the new normal or what everyone has to go through. Um, within the medical field, I mean, it put a lot of people in question of what they really want to do because you're staying there day in and day out. Um, and we didn't have that luxury of taking time off from work um, or necessarily changing our positions. So I really think it gave you that perspective, like this is really what I want to do. Um, and this is how I can help people. And so like moving forward, it's, it's being able to reach the people that weren't able to come out and access healthcare during that time, um, whether it because of, you know, illnesses themselves or just fear of getting something else, but knowing that they can have faith in the medical community that we're going to get to them any way we can. So I think it's going to change the perspective of how medicine is, is dealt with, um, give more options, like obviously the telehealth communications and being able to maybe bring back that house calls and going to see patients a little bit more than having to force them to come into office hours that may not fit around their schedule. Okay. And what do you think that most med students have learned um, during the pandemic as we now move to the goal of uh, everyone being vaccinated? I mean, I think the one biggest thing that I kind of took out of it is the fact that we don't know enough um, and that you're constantly learning and you go into the medicine that everything is going to evolve. Obviously, we don't do procedures and surgeries the way the same way that we did 50 years ago. Um, and so the from a med student's aspect is you're trying to learn as much as you can, put yourself into any different experiences you can. Um, and I know obviously hospitals first were shut down for the med students during the beginning of COVID, right. but really taking the opportunity that once we got back into the hospital, what can we do? Just putting yourself in different situations um, that you might not have thought about doing just to make you kind of get out of your comfort zone is one of the biggest thing. And the more that you can learn, the more that you can experience those things is a better way that you can help your patients in the future. Okay, great. And you've, you've been a wonderful interview, uh, Dr. Dako. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add that we haven't covered? No, I mean, I think um, UMHS definitely pushed me to kind of get out of my comfort zone is, you know, you, you go study on an island for two years and then you kind of get thrown into clinicals. Um, and it definitely pushes you to kind of see if this is what you want to do. It's for a student that, you know, wants to take the extra step and say, I'm going to help lead these other students or start a group that can help us kind of all get to our goal. Um, I think that's definitely helped me pursue what I want to do. Okay, excellent. And are you open to having uh, current or prospective students contact you via email if they have any questions about UMHS? Yes, or, okay. All right, yeah. so we'll we'll include that information. Well, if there's if you there's nothing else, I thank you so much time for thank so much you. for your time, Dr. Daco. Um, I wish you all the best of luck um, in your upcoming residency. And again, uh, thanks for your time today. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, uh, Dr. Daco, and have a great day. All right, thanks. Too.